Right, I've got a title. Right, cool. So we're going to kind of whiz through this because it is quite short. There is only two or three features that we need to talk about, and the good thing is they're all linked to Longshore Drift. All right. So that diagram there is the one I want you to copy. All right. But all of the features we're going to talk about start with this. Right. Can't have any of the features without longshore drift happening. And longshore drift is a process of now when you go on holiday and you stand in the sea, and those of you doing that five, you all already know this kind of analogy, and you're waving to your parents, and then like you play a wee bit in the sea and you bob along and everything's nice, you're like, well, I'm on holiday, this is cool. And then you walk out the sea and you walk up in the straight line because you walked in the straight line and you're standing next to an old couple who are looking at you like you're mental, and you're like, pretty sure. Uh, my mum and dad were here, but actually they're like 20 metres to your left. And you're thinking, all right, this is weird, and you've got to walk across the beach. That's longshore drift happening. It happens to you. I was going to do it on holiday when I was sitting at the beach, but I got into trouble from my girlfriend. I wasn't allowed. I was thinking, I could just throw a ball in the water and film it on my phone. As it just bobs along the... What are you looking at, Rosie? That's a good... That's a dedication I have to my job. All right, so make sure you get a copy of this diagram down, folks, because... Right, so, longshore drift, this is the diagram. Uh, again, I encourage you to draw the diagram when you're writing an answer, because it will hopefully structure your thoughts into what's happening at each stage. Oh, this is fun, this doesn't work. There we go. There is the paragraph that follows it. So that is almost like, for every feature I'm going to message, there you go, the blind copiers. Nice, I like it. This is a kind of paragraph, or a version of this paragraph, that is going to form almost an introduction to every feature we're going to talk about this afternoon. All right? There's going to be three, but they all start with this process. All right? So longshore drift is the movement of sand and silt along the coast by the waves in the direction of the prevailing wind, right? That's key, mentioning the prevailing wind, and we're going to be able to add a wee bit more to this when we discuss atmosphere eh, a bit later in the year, all right? So that's where you get one mark explaining what longshore drift is, is the movement of sand and silt along the beach, all right? I'll show you a really good picture of it, of the kind of effects of it. In the UK, this is from the southwest, as a result of the northeast trade winds. The northeast trade winds are what we're going to discuss when we discuss the atmosphere unit. All right, and why they're called the northeast trade winds and why they blow that way and why they give us the prevailing wind. All right, but for today's purpose, trust me, that's why it is. Yeah. As a swash moves onto the beach, it does so at an angle of 45 degrees due to wave refraction. Yeah, wave refraction, we're coming to that. We've seen wave refraction happening in formation of. Headlands and base. It's crazy how this all links together, eh? Mental. Uh, and is moved off the beach at right angles of 90 degrees as backwash due to gravity. So it comes on the beach at 45 degrees angles and then it goes off the beach almost at a straight line at 90 degrees angles. So you can actually add in the kind of information to, to your diagram if you so wish. After repeated moves, the particle is transported along the coastline. So it starts at point A and ends up at point B. Nothing will stop that, right? Until something is put in its way, all right? Uh, when the sand reaches an area of slow moving water, e.g. a bay, it is not deposited on the beach, but under the water, right? So it's almost like the deposit under water, and slowly that builds up, until it sticks out the water and it creates new land for us to walk on. All right? And I'll show you what that feature's called. All right? Creating features such as sandbars, sand spits, and tombolos. And that is the three features that we're going to focus on today. Sandbars, sand spits, and tombolos. And they all start, and they're all formed due to this process of longshore drift. That's why it's so important. So, from that answer, I'll show you this diagram, which will kind of show you exactly the kind of impact it has on a beach. All right? So, longshore drift is happening here, 
as the arrows kind of show you, 45 degrees, it's happening in this direction. The best one to look at is a kind of third section along. You see how at the far end there's a lot more sand than at the kind of closer end of these bits of wood. So you can see that is happening. And what would happen is if these bits of wood called groins weren't here, that whole beach from here would kind of shift and then eventually disappear. It's running. It's not going. It's just running. Although it wouldn't surprise me either way. All right. But yeah, you can see the kind of that is evidence that longshore drift happens. The sand from there has moved over to there. And if it wasn't for this bit of wood, a structure called a groin, that sand would eventually move all the way around the bay there. All right. Can we see that? That kind of in the perspective of what we're talking about. Uh, a lot of beaches actually do disappear because of longshore drift. There's a lot of human interference of adding sand that they've bought from other countries onto it or putting in groins to try and stop the beaches disappearing. It doesn't quite look as good as the beaches you get on holiday because they're big wooden bits. But there'd be no beach there at all if they didn't exist. All right. So, depositional features there. A stand spit. You don't need to take this just now, folks. All right. It's joined to the mainland at one end and juts out into the sea. All right. An example in, in Dorset is sandbanks. We're going to come on to like adding this into the answer in a sec. If the sand spit it extends into fast flowing water, so if it extends like into a river where the water is flowing out to sea, it will be kind of washed away or it will change direction. And that's what we call a hooked sand spit. All right. Because it actually hooks round. And I'll show you a couple of examples of them. Uh, can also change direction because of a change in the prevailing wind. The second most common wind, yeah, comes from the southeast. So it can instead of going that way, it can kind of hook around that way, depending on the wave direction and so on. All right, so a few things influence it. Because it is so much land, we can actually build on sand spits. There is like sort of bars and stuff built on sand spits and houses and huts and so on. All right, it is solid land. It's not like a floating island or anything like that. So there is a good diagram. All right, don't copy this down. I'll get your copy this because it is quite a complex diagram. One thing we need to note and one thing we need to add in. Yeah. So you've got your longshore drifts. This is where you explain it. You're talking about prevailing winds. Yeah. Talk about material being deposited. This is important here, where it says the coastline changes direction. Right. If the coastline doesn't change direction, yeah, longshore drift continues to happen and this feature never forms because it has no slow moving water to deposit the, the sand in. All right. So it's important that you mention in your answer that the coastline changes direction. Yeah. And then obviously towards the end it's labeled a sand spit and actually with the change of wind direction, like I was mentioned, you get a curve. When the wind direction changes back, it extends, and you get a curve, and then that kind of continues until it reaches uh, an area of fast flowing water, such as a river hitting the sea, and it starts to wash the sediment out into the sea, and your spit doesn't get any longer or bigger. Do you understand that, folks? Yeah? Right, now what I want you to do then is add the information we've got there, particularly the bit about the coastline changing direction. That's really, really important. All right? To, to your answer and your diagram you've got there. All right. Uh, I don't know if you want to put it in another colour, highlight it and say that this is a sand spit because we are going to talk about a sandbar and a pole as well. And we're just going to kind of add that on to the bit we've already got rather than rewriting it at this stage. All right. So I don't know if you want to write it and then go and highlight it in red and say red equals sand spit, green equals sandbar blue equals to bowl or something like that, so you can distinguish what ending you need to put on depending on what feature you're, you're, you're talking about. Yes? Cool. Let's do that just now then. Right, so that's the formation of a sand spit. You kind of add that section on with the change of the coastline to the end of your kind of paragraph explaining longshore drift. That was an interesting story of Snapchat. All right, so this is a sandbar then, right? Now, it follows the same process, longshore drift, 
this forms a sandbar is formed when a sand spit extends across a bay and kind of blocks off the bay, right? So you can see the kind of bay starting in that far end of the picture, and actually the sand spit has got so big, again, you can see things, you know, built on it, that it's actually went right across the bay, and this area of water behind it, which was the bay, has now turned into a lagoon because it's, it's shut off. Yeah, so the water trap behind it's called a, a lagoon. Due to the, the decrease in wave activity, it is now just a body of still water. No water can kind of get to it. Uh, water slows down, continues to deposit sand and silt. Yeah, basically, because it's still water, it's much easier for it to evaporate. Yeah, and eventually the water is taken away and it becomes a marshy sort of area and then it becomes new land which actually you can use to build on. So a sandbar is what happens when a sand spit extends across a bay, shutting part of the bay off as such. No wave activity makes it easier for the water to evaporate and then it disappears, it forms marshy kind of boggy land and then slowly that will dry out and you'll get new land. Yeah. Who knew all this was happening at the beach? And now you're going to the beach and building sand castles and try to dig to China and bury yourself. Yeah. You've missed out on all these opportunities, all this learning. Right, so the last feature we're going to look at then. What are you asking, Rosie? Yeah, no, that's specific to the picture. Uh, but again, it's an example you can use if you want to at the, at the end of it to say that a named example is this or this. But that is specific to that picture. That picture is uh, Chesil Beach and the lagoon is called the Fleet. All right, but we'll come back to that in a wee second. Just the next one is very, very short. So, a tombolo then, right? So if a sand spit that extends out into the sea or into a bay and it connects to an island and creates a, a pathway to then walk on the island, it then becomes a tombolo. All right, that is literally that sentence. Right, so if it extends out and it actually reaches an island and creates like a, a pathway to the island, it's called a tombolo. You could kind of walk along there thinking like you're Moses or something, eh? I can see what the heck that. So I mean, that's a wee link to our MPS for those that, that do that. You know, Moses, partner of the sea. Nah. Cool. Just me then. 